Uh-oh. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. Third time is a charm. Um, it has been uh, such a day. Maybe third time won't be a charm, considering how the day has gone. We'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm really happy to have you here. And uh, we're working on skin tones. And um, I've said this a couple times already, but we've had uh, had multiple failures, <laughs> and, and so we're we're just kind of rolling with it. Um, uh, what I'm really focused on uh, today is blocking in the the uh, Mary and her um, her facial expression. Hopefully it's uh, you know, full of wonder um, and, uh, and kind of mystery and kind of just deep consideration. Um, but you're here uh, because uh, you want to learn um, how to put in the, uh, the skin tones and how to do a portrait. All these things kind of come into play. and. Uh, I, I'm just, I'd love to be just whatever assistance you need, so any questions you have, I'd uh, just love to, to help out with, so please um, drop those in the chat, and I, I will be happy to address those. So I've begun today just by uh, blocking in um, just some major uh, color relationships, uh, uh, major planes of the face and really trying to get this to a, a point of um, where I can start to take a little more care and have um, everything be you know, ni nicely kind of finished and rendered. So in, in working my way there, I, I mixed up um, a handful of skin tones uh, here in my palette, and I'll just share those with you really, really quick. Um, I just want you to see, uh, if you're watching this later, um, that this is, this is kind of what I aim for, to have some reds uh, in kind of darks and some greens and darks. Um, so reds and greens in kind of mid-tones and then multiple uh, play uh, just lighter tones for the areas in the light so that I can do some subtle adjustments. So you know, there's some blues, there's some purples, there's some reds, oranges, yellows, greens, um, just all over the place. And of course I still have my uh, color palette to change and alter those as they come. Now, I'm, I'm trying to let there be kind of an interplay between warm and warm and cool uh, colors, you know, here and let some of that really, it's, it's, it's good, it's good energy uh, in a painting. Um, when, when that's uh, going really well, you, you feel uh, a, a life to, to the figure and, and, and to what's being depicted. Kind of soften some of my hard uh, areas here. And really from here on out, it's gonna be a lot of just delicate uh, changes, you know, I'm, some point I'll, I'll hop in full time, full bore into, you know, the eyes. Um, but I, but before I kind of leap into things as complicated as that, I'd like to have a good amount of description uh, around, around the around the eye, so that again I, I want to make good decisions and just starting in an area without kind of the supporting cast. Is, is hard to do. The 
from us today will be uh, very fun and interesting, and you're going to take away uh, a lot from, from this session. So at first, I am just blocking, blocking, blocking in and getting more and more information in there. The lawn guy is hard at work right now, and he is, he is getting it done out there. Uh, yesterday was much more uh, satisfying. There was a, a thunderstorm came in and really changed um, really changed the atmosphere of the piece and all of us here together in the live stream were um, just remarking about wow this was really fun and it was one of those kind of special moments At some point, I'll I'll have to start um, making uh, some decisions, and you know this is all a a slow build up. And there's always that moment where in this process, it's just, um, it's not really exciting. And, you know, that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. There's sort of not enough information out there and yet to really get pumped up about the piece. And so, and when that happens, then we just, we wait, kind of keep working. So it's a good idea to keep your hairlines really soft. And this is, this is no different. Point that I've been avoiding for a while now is just when do I finally buckle down and get out the smaller brushes and start really describing this and we're gonna have to get to that point pretty soon I hear my hero, Sean. Hello. And feel free to you can take back the the screen now you if you people. like. Uh, we did for br brief moments, but I think it's, it's later in the day always, as we know. Kids are asleep for the moment, and Ernest is awake. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, is he doing something? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
told me, but I don't need to tell anybody else. <laughs> so, you want me to staple this thing? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, so, uh, the goal with the staple stapler, well, the point drivers, more specifically, as it's called, is um, to, you know, not dig into the the surface if it can be helped, but to uh, put it in at such an angle so that it won't shift around when moved. Um, so you you can feel that around, like so you you want to give it a little bit of an angle when you're when you're driving it. Um, uh, not so much that probably if you lay it down because it's meant to be just kind of laid down, and then maybe just a little bit of a right. yep, yeah, mm-hmm, and uh, just set it all the way up against that edge and it should pop. So. Okay. Just to show me how to do it. Sounds good. Yeah. We're 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 not in any any terrible rush there. This is kind of all we have left to do on that one. <laughs> and if I put that in the wrong way, I don't want to do that. So. It'll probably be okay. But I did uh, funny story. Um, I had to restretch a painting. Which is one of the other reasons why I've gone to more rigid supports. So using Raymar uh, canvases, uh, just one of the things that can happen is you're depending on the humidity. Which you know, like I live in Kansas, so humidity radically changes throughout the year. And I had a I had a buyer who. Um, I had stretched this uh, fine grain linen, um, and but I had stretched it in the summer, and so you know it looked great when I stretched it, and the winter rolled around, and that fine grain linen got super saggy, and so they were like, "Hey, can you can you fix this?" And I was like, "Yes, I can," and so you know I took it off the stretcher bars and. Um, Anna and I were, uh, working on, you know, just wor working together as a team to, um, get, uh, just get the right amount of tension in, um, and, uh, there was this moment where, you know, you're a team of two, one person has to provide the tension, the other person has to do the stapling, so, um, I was providing the tension and I was doing the stapling and she uh she sent a staple <laughs> through the canvas. No Yes, it oh, uh, shot God. through, it was just kinda like sticking through like an arrow. Oh, no. Um so so you know, I, I mended it uh and uh and sent it back on its merry way. But uh it was definitely one of those moments of uh and she was very sad. It's a sad thing. Um, and you know, I, I I wasn't happy either. So, mm -hmm. as you might imagine. <laughs> However, it is that sort of a thing that is um, life in the arts. It's weird, like one one in a million chance things that happen. That you're like, wow, I I get to deal with this. Yep. Isn't that a thing? And the, the painting is fine, and everything in the client is fine, and everything is good now. So, just saying that to let you know we, we did we did we did good. Everything saved the day. Saved the day. So this looks pretty dark. Yeah, but if we lighten this up anymore, it's gonna blow out the face. I mean, it's it's kind of what it is. Here's where like a nicer camera can be better. I mean, you can adjust the, the function. You can bump it up one notch. Um, pull down the F, the function button there, and then exposure. So, exposure. Yep. Kind of see how that improves it or doesn't improve it. 
and stuff. It's like, what, what do you want to see? Do you want to see the dark values or the light values? Maybe it helps a little bit. Okay. It doesn't seem like it's too bright. All right, um, back at it. And if you were on earlier, apologize for the abrupt ending to the stream. And we've got some footage anyway. And let me put together the kind of final the, the big picture, you might say. Uh, then. That part will be in there too. Okay, I'm getting over a cold. Or I still have it. Um, sorry about that. Getting the best of me. You want me to take over? Yep. Mm -hmm. Tag. Jump in. Tag team, that face. Might look a little bit different. I'll just I'll just tell you what to do. Yeah. That's probably <laughs> enough instruction. Did you see that oil painting? Such a good I think I can take over this. Same concept. You mean your watercolor? Yep. Yep. So, is there anything I want me to do? Because I've got everything almost done except for the descriptions on the live stream or in the visitation to DNG. Yeah, probably. Um, but descriptions in the live streams would be good. Just talking about kind of what happens each day. Um, as I said, if you, you can kind of take as a template some of my old ones, it's just a little bit of a help as to oh, what do I what do I do here? Or say here. All right, I'm gonna to switch to some smaller liner brushes. Same sort of concept. I'll have a kind of a dark, a medium, a light value um, that I'll work with. And I just need to get some of the, the detail on the eye. I just haven't gotten there yet. And just the features in general. Um, I just need to get get those in place so that I feel like, oh yeah. This is this is happening. Be amazing in the when trying to capture your skin tones that yep, got that. Thanks.
a lot of times you just as I'm going I'll discover um, just various other oh, drawing issues that, you know where the eye kind of comes down a little different than I, than I had originally intended or had sketched in Am I doing okay? Yeah, yeah, there's, uh, there's time for everything for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good man. Hey, this is a good practice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. She seems really, like, whatever, this is really small, whatever she was putting on. I think she grabbed the wrong ones. <laughs> but we got it on there. I don't think it's right, but it just took a lot of effort. This day may be uh, uh, somewhat doomed. I don't know. It just seems like a, lo a lot of efforts have been frustrated today. We're up to three. That's good. Welcome. Please, if you have questions, drop them off. Uh, be glad to glad to try to address those. Um, right now, you know, I've, I kind of blocked in some major areas of, of the face and, um, you know, missing some spots, but I've got enough to tell me about what's happening in the rest of the painting. And so I've just begun walking my way through describing as best I can, um, Some of these areas especially around um, like the nose and certain parts of the eye uh, you, you can after a while you can begin to just really see them for uh, for what they are for and how can begin to make out, all right, this is the tendency for this area around the eye. Um, it, it always, the eye generally, there's, there's, these really, there's these really warm points, there's really, really cool points, and those almost always exist um, kind of in the same sp space. So you might be working with your model, um, but after a while, you just get used to um, those those anatomical kind of cues, and you you see them, and even if you don't quite see them, you you add them anyway. Um, and so I used my bigger brushes to kind of block in, and now I just want to block in a couple of a little more specific areas and. Um, Trying to keep
I think here's another big thing when doing a face, doing a portrait, you know, just knowing that it always comes down to millimeters and there are numerous times where it just looks bad um, because you just put something in and you're like, oh, that's, that's not happening or, oh, that's, that's no good. Um, and, you know, being okay with that for the moment and and kind of pushing through and figuring it out is is kind of where the where the victory lies um, and it is happening on the block today yeah it is uh, we've got uh, all kinds of trash being picked up and the long guy this is amazing audio today that's coming through for you and you alone live streamers you're so uh welcome nice. yeah this is like this is <laughs> oh i mean it could have been yesterday where we had uh thunderstorm thunderstorm it was beautiful it's kind of a beautiful moment Instead, uh, the most interesting part of the whole live stream yeah. is when they have to come and get the trash. Yeah. Things. I mean, my kids had a fight earlier today uh, during the first part, and I had to uh, quit and go handle that. <laughs> So today, today's uh, today's cursed. If we if we get anything out of today, it's gonna be it's gonna be a miracle. And a lot of times where you make an adjustment and you're like, oh, and then you just kind of keep making it just, keep making it just until you're like, oh, there it is. Um, so I'm kind of looking carefully at my drawing, looking carefully at my, my source material and just getting it a little more right, a little more a little greater care taken here and there, just so this works. I thought maybe it was just my trash that was causing all the sound, but I think it's the truck. Yeah, it's the truck. Um, but then maybe we had some, you know, maybe we had some heavy stuff that we threw away, right? You know. Yeah, but they already came by and got that. This okay. is recycling. Okay. Oh, there you go. What a day. I'm just like, it seems, it is, I mean, I was gonna say it seems arbitrary, it totally is. I'm just like hopping around here, seeing a few things that I wanna adjust, making those adjustments, and then um, going on my merry way uh, into another area.
realize before I go on, I want to just kind of fill in, mm. fill in the rest here. And um, that you know, are still very hard edged and um, are going to require some attention, some work, and, uh, and we'll get there. You know, there's a couple of and the schools of thought, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, get it down right, get it down, take your time on the front end, get it down right, and, you know, that's that's that. Um, I'm, I'm more the person that's like, get it down, and um, get it down, see how it's going, see kind of what you can adjust and move toward that direction, so. So maybe mine is a little more fussy, but um, it just ends up being high, kind of how it works for me and my process. If you've been uh, hanging out with me in the past couple of days, you'll you'll know that I, I talk about it kind of those those times in between where it's just it's not there yet. You know, the, the painting itself goes through kind of one of these big swings, but um, every day, kind of what I'm working on almost goes through one of these swings where I'm. I'm excited about it, and then I, I'm not. <laughs> um, so I think I'm gonna work on, I just have a few more adjustments to make here, and then I'm gonna really dial in to certain areas. I'll probably start um, by getting into the eye. Um, first we've got to get there first. Get just a little more described in here. What's amazing to me about working on the face is the swiftness with which it, it could be working on an area and you know it's going okay and then Either you, you make one adjustment and it just gets way better, or you make one adjustment and it just gets way worse. And you're like, what? Um, and so I think just expecting that is, is a big win uh, in your skin tones. I said it a couple of days ago 
maybe even yesterday, I don't even know. <laughs> it's just all beginning to run together. Um, you know, the, all of us, uh, every single person, each uh, one of our skin tones, and I mean every one, we, we're, we're a low chroma orange. Um, it doesn't matter who, who you are, doesn't matter your ethnic background. Background, uh, we're a low chroma orange, and uh, knowing that um, allows us to kind of move forward in ways that are are good. And rather than trying to do a whole lot of other uh, crazy stuff, we're low chroma orange which that just means a low saturation orange, um, then we don't have to worry about doing a whole lot more. I just need a little more, uh, this cheek seemed a little sunken to me. Um, so right now, uh, kind of still, still working on that, still getting there. Not, not terribly in love with anything yet. It's coming though, I think. Do you have any questions? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, there's three people. Okay. So I think what I'm mostly looking for in, in these times are just the the glaring hard edged spaces that are just bugging me a lot um, I mean there's believe me there's a ton that is bothering me because it's just not even anywhere near there yet um, but uh, I'm on it and Slowly working my way. To something. That is, uh, that is satisfying. Oh, like, uh, so if there were, you know, a lot of people want, you know, big general sweeping rules for like, well, how, how do you make skin tones? And, um, and I'll just say that I, there's not really, I mean, and, it, and if anyone says, oh, well, here's how you do it. I mean, yeah, it, that's, that it might work that way for this one time in this one light space in this, you know, it, so just, it just varies a lot, uh, depending on light, depending on, um, depending on the person's ethnicity. Uh, and it, so you can't really, as much as I say, you know, in one respect, to keep it simple, we're all a low chroma orange. In another respect, um, it's more important to begin seeing uh, the, the subtleties. And there's no quick fix for that <clears throat> other than uh, a lot of training. And, um, One of the ways that uh, I try to keep everything a little um, kind of under control and, and successful uh, in my work is by using a limited palette. And you'll hear, you'll hear me talk about it a lot. Uh, and and I'll, I'll share that real quick. We're, we're gonna, one of these days, have a fancy palette view. Um, 
and so I can kind of talk a little more specifically on that. Um, oops, all right. Here's my here's my palette here. Um, so, so I'm using you know, lead white, cad yellow, yellow ochre, cadmium red, viridian, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, um, alizarin crimson, and cer cerulean blue. And I just use those to kind of mix all these. And so I've I've mixed I've done a mixture of uh, having some kind of reddish and greenish, um, darks, midtones, and then numerous uh, various color, just based off of kind of my palette uh, with kind of lighter lighter tones, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna continue to put things down until it works, and so. I've made those piles so that I can just kind of quickly grab and and, and put it down. Uh, but then after that, uh, I'll, I'll use those for some kind of some very delicate tuning and dialing in. This is usually a very slow process here. If and if you want to use some of those uh, really more vibrant um, colors off of your palette, then do so in the edges of of where you're working. So, like on the edge of the lip here. If I want to really get some red in there, then you know I, I want. I want it to probably be in the edge and not in the not in the middle or not in the middle of the lip. You can really pump up your intensity around uh, around your darks, rather than kind of going for. Um, an intense like red red lip. I, fi I find um, at least on uh, more lighter uh, skin tones that there is a bluer, oh, a cooler uh, blue or bluer red for the lips. There's a warmer orangey red for the, um, uh, the the area of of the nose, the bridge of the nose, and around the, the cheekbones. And those are just the the parts that you know you can kind of see uh, the, the more you spend time with with uh, the figure and the model. Those really just start to kind of work together. There's a lot of opportunities too for uh, lost edges, and you know I I kind of just lose this edge uh, behind here. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave that like that for now, and see see where we end up. This looks kind of strangely blue on this other side, and so you know, I'll also trust trust that experience, um, knowing that oftentimes there are these contrasting elements beside one another. said you've kind of come in at what is a long battle um, and and it's really a battle of inches you know from this point forward where uh, I'm adjusting fixing I'm looking at okay what what haven't I addressed yet and then I look over here and I say okay wow I haven't even um, begun to address this eye because I've been so focused on other areas and
sometimes I don't like what I did at all uh, because it, it shifted something like a millimeter and you're like, that's not working anymore. And so some days it's like, it's just a battle. <laughs> I think, th I think this one is shaping up to be one. So, yeah, talked about talked a little bit about it. Um, I think to everyone, maybe it was yesterday, that there's some days that just like seem to go really well, uh, and other days that are just fraught with. I, I liken it to basketball. I'm not really a basketball player or sports guy at all, but like. Sometimes your field goal percentage is just amazing, and you you can't miss. And then other days, you're you go to a, a game and you're like, man, I can't buy a bucket. Happens in in painting and in arts and in all sorts of. Um, I think fine art crafts. We're above the garage. That's the garage door you hear. It's just a day of noises. A lot of looking back and forth, a lot of deciding. using small brushes <laughs> and, and so it, it it pains me to get out something this size it just starts to get too linear um, and but some of these details I just don't have maybe just the energy the the knowledge which to uh, capture it without and so I have to kind of do this, uh, this battle, battle through it. Looking carefully over some of these areas, realizing, you know, there's, my brows are a lot softer, not as much of a, value shift so yeah I'll be working on one area but then something just really suddenly bugs me and I'll jump to it You know, the eyebrow is just a little too high. Or 
your highlight that's the problem you know you kind of look at it for so long you're like oh this is bugging me what is it I can't tell uh, and then you find it um, it's just this highlight I had too far over So if you're watching, you have a, do you have a, a, a moral responsibility to tell me some of these <laughs> that are wrong? Uh, you gotta let me know so so that I can move forward with a successful painting. I, I you know I only end up seeing so much. I rely on usually the feedback of of those around me. Usually, ask the guys. I say, man, what? What's going on here? Why, why isn't this working? Why? Um, gotta, gotta have those guys around you to tell you what you're doing wrong. Actually, before I'm done, there's also a time of going to get my wife as well. I'm just saying, hey, what? Do you see anything amiss here? Why? Why isn't this working? What? just can't see it anymore. Well, unless something's like glaringly wrong, I don't think I'm gonna be of much help. <laughs> I, I don't think it looks great. I'm trying to figure out something out that's wrong so that way I can just tell you something's wrong. But... <laughs> you know the eyebrow on the right side was a little bit too high, but that's how it looks in your source material. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, there's like, that's why portraiture is, is such, um, I mean, you just want to, Sometimes you just want to die because you're like, this is, I have battled this. It just doesn't even look like this person. Um, and what is it? I'm trying to find, you know, those key things. Because even if you get the drawing right, um, or you use a projection, or you use any, any of those things, but then you but then you have to get each shadow uh, correct. And where, where does the light end? And where's the terminus? Where's the shadow turn? And... It's a lot, it's a lot to get right. I don't think I want just a little more cheek here. It just seems a little, and these are just the things too where I, I'm working and I'm like, ah, this just isn't right. And I couldn't tell you exactly why or how, but it's not. And then two, even like in here. You just you just kind of see thing after thing. You get this this careful refinement of the drawing. Uh, there's just more. The forehead just comes out a little more here. It was just a little more rounded. I had it more angular than it was.
And you like forget a whole section, like what what happened here? How come I didn't put any paint there? And probably because I'm too easily distracted jumping from one area to another. That left eye looks kind of weird. There's a lot of weirdness right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm like, I don't. Her left or my left? Uh, her left. Oh, no, no, your left. Yeah, sorry. The one farthest away. The closer one looks really, really good. Okay. That's usually how it goes, too. There is a... One is easy. I don't know. Like, I mean, I did this too, right? So I, I have a, I have a tutorial, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and how to draw the eye tutorial uh, here on YouTube. Uh, it's good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, but it's only one eye, and one eye is, you know, that's easy. So when you have to do two, and you're trying to make that work, that you're gonna really battle. Our eyes are like the hardest thing. Um, I mean, not not necessarily. I mean, I to to a degree, yes. But once once you understand kind of the the basics, I I think um, they're not too bad. There's there's just a lot, so so many <laughs> parts of the face. Because um, even as I'm like standing here, I'm like, oh, you know, I need to address that too. Like I think the my angle down here just needs to come out a little more a little more down and then up here. And this side comes out a little farther. And so you'll make those are sort of adjustments that you're like, okay, what what's what's happening? What's happening there? Like, well, we're we're getting there. We're... Little drawing adjustments. to have an understanding of the structures of the eyes too so the eyelids so that maybe you're not necessarily seeing this in action but because I mean the source material is, is only so good and then I don't really have anything else to base base this off base this off of. thing that's bothering me the most is the areas corner of the mouth is always a nice little highlight usually You know, even in my model here, there's a little bit of a, you can see a small amount of skin just coming around.
So I've tried to make also, I've done a, a few adjustments and just trying to make uh, the, the Mary look a little more youthful than, um, than I have in my model. And so I'm wrestling with uh, some, some level of invention too, which is always some of that. Yeah, I see what you're saying though. I was waiting for kind of like the wrinkles in her face, but since you're trying to make it more useful, I can I can see it more now. Hey, need me for anything else? I think I think we're good to go can for now. The monitor back on. Please? Yeah, so I can interact. No. Thanks. Yeah, I think I could be able to read from there. Can yeah. move closer? No. Yeah. No? It's good. Okay. Thanks. I'm going to go hang out Chuck for a little bit. Sounds good, man. Thanks. Thanks. See ya. Really here, I just go through uh, an agonizing amount of adjustments. <laughs> um, until I get there. But please, uh, drop off a question because uh, you know I want to I want to help you in your art making and I kind of don't know how uh, unless you let me know so please 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 drop a line and and really kind of at this point the the major relationships are locked in and now it's a question of how much refinement do I want to make um, I've got to I've got to take this a long way. Yet and and so how how far do I go, and where do we? What's what's the stopping point? Um, we've kind of talked about this in our in the other days as well, and we're just going to kind of keep keep going and keep refining until there is there's a point where it's kind of all working together. So I know I'm, I know it's lighter up here, and it kind of gets darker here. And so I'm just pulling a little bit of this in, and letting all the weirdness happens with every adjustment on the face you make. This process is so unbelievably unforgiving, <laughs> um, and you will. You will, and I, I have, and do uh, wrestle with this every time you're working on it. And every every adjustment I make, I I tend to get very kind of I, I 
just really struggle. Uh, like, am I satisfied with that? Am I not? And there's just a lot of battle that goes on. Amazing thing too with skin tones portraiture is it just you adjust and you continue to work through it and continue to find uh, more things that need attention. I pretty much neglected this corner of the eye over here missed out. Currently without a moderator, so um, if you drop off a question, I'll, I'll see it. Just may take just a little bit for that to happen. Bring the shadow down more. Kind of like I did on the uh, fabric yesterday. Um, I'm still thinking about the overall form. So, you know, if I'm trying to describe a, a three-dimensional eye, uh, kind of a ball within the socket, I'm still thinking about curving the lines and the marks around so that um, we're creating volume. Added to the cheeks, um, I've uh, 
brought up the chin a little bit. And these are all small drawing uh, adjustments I've made to uh, give a little more of a youthful appearance um, to, to Mary, at least in this point in the narrative in her story. Yeah, depicting the five joyful mysteries and um, this is the Annunciation when uh, the angel Gabriel comes to announce uh, to Mary that she will give birth to Jesus and so this is uh, the subject mass subject matter I've been ta tasked with, uh, with, um, with capturing I thought it'd be fun to kind of take this from start to finish so that everyone could see uh, each bit of the process and, and so that all of that could just kind of stand out there in time as well. So this is darker right here and I really want to get that in there and get that right. This is just kind of a darker shadow here on her brow. And then you can see that that's a little extreme and at least for the moment I got my little kind of buffer here and I'll I'll work back into that soften that area there and following those contours of the face um, And a good study of, of of a skull is also tremendously helpful in your in capturing the portrait. No, that's not as much as uh, you know. No, there's many facets to this, right? So there's the drawing structurally, thinking about how um, you uh, the structure that lies underneath. And then there's actually the skin tone color that we're also trying to achieve. And again, it's one of those things why this is like the most difficult thing there is to accomplish is painting a portrait that works. Um, and <clears throat> takes a long time and there's many spots and places that I, I still have have a rough time with um, you know I'm working through here but I'm gonna I'm gonna come back and bring my terminus around a little more uh, there's some other structures I want to try to capture in the face um,
I'm starting to like this structure in here a lot more. Um, that feels, you know, if I kind of hide the rest and I just look at uh, that area, I'm like, yes, that's what I want. Okay, how do I uh, achieve that in the rest of the piece? And it means we're going to have to go to the mat with this one. things about um, doing the live stream is like I'm not really able to step back and take a look at the painting from a distance and that's, that's, that's hard for me to do um, I'm kind of boxed in here and I'll lower this just slightly. I do have my my mirror though, and so I try to that's kind of just about as good as stepping back a ways. amazing even what that that tells me you know I could see okay I haven't really the forehead I haven't begun to take and and turn back and so we're gonna work on that for a little bit Notice there's that same pattern, same stroke that you know, I basically have one rounded area that I'm trying to capture. And so in as much as I can Just a little bit, maybe bring that exposure down some more. And I know to, to, degree, to a great degree it's largely a sphere that I'm trying to create and so I'm going to build, uh, build it in that way. I know I did go ahead and get up and take a step back so I could see it, see it fresh. I'm 
got a little more a little more excited about that now that I kind of saw that fixed it happier with how it's coming every feature needs that same attention taken to it I think I want to work on jawline some they have a really warm shadow because it's reflecting uh, the red here underneath I'm going to just extend that line just a little bit I had I had brought it up in an attempt to a little more youthful appearance but now I think I just need a little more chin there We can get to a point too where it's really hard to see uh, see what's happening anymore, just because you know there's a refinement here that there's just not here yet, and
Yeah, Casper, thanks for the comments. It's it's strange, isn't it? Um, there'll be parts that really, uh, th thanks for the comment, uh, there'll be parts that you, and I guess it's one of those like rewarding and also frustrating parts about working um, from uh, from the model is you know you're you're gonna see these things that need 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 it. You go in, you try to make it, it doesn't happen. You wrestle with it some more, um, and you know like even now I'm kind of looking about how I want to change. Um, the difference between the, the eyes and so uh yeah and, I, and i'll just wrestle around with this until i kind of get get to that point um but it is wild yeah small small changes go a long way and i really want to soften this down here it's bugging me i just want to bring this shadow up a little bit It's not as hard. I think that's the fun and interesting and frustrating part about painting the figure, skin tones, you know, drawing everything else that is involved with it. Like it, <laughs> it can be so frustrating. <laughs> oh. And, and and even now I'm like yeah I'm I'm kind of okay with it but I'm um, but I'm really having to kind of battle and finding find those parts that I want to address um, so I can get satisfaction um, but Viago uh, how did I start it yes uh, yeah kind of yeah. You, the kind of had a grisaille going, um, and feel free to check out uh, uh, the rest of the videos, uh, and you can see that process too. So it really this is a mixture. Um, largely, my piles of paint are opaque at this point, painting on top of the underpainting. Um, but I'm still using that underpainting to give me the umph that I need in order for the painting to be successful. So I wouldn't have been able, this is to a degree, uh, um, kind of like a wet on wet, you know, an alla prima method, but, but that's just the thing. It's, it's based on and requires uh, all the layers that are underneath. Um, and it's just so funny how like, it's definitely not a glaze per se. That that might fall under my kind of third layer if I were putting down a third layer, and I might if I want to color correct a few things or uh, make some adjustments. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it, it's largely opaque. But there is there is quite a few quite a bit of that, uh, that underpainting or grisaille, if you want to call it, uh, sh showing through. It's just hard to make out what is and what isn't uh, at this point. Um, if, if there's anything else that kind of sticks out or bugs me, then I'll kind of drop in. So th this is what I like to call kind of like the finish layer. So the finish layer is uh, I, I am done really making the major decisions. And then I'll make some of the smaller decisions with, um, with kind of the, the more of a glazing technique if I, if I find that I need a little more of this or that uh, here and there. Um, but great question, thank you. A lot of these edges just need to be softened. Um, and it's just one of those things that there's kind of not enough time in the world to, so 
why they say a painting is never finished. Um, so these, for me, I'm just going to kind of keep battling uh, some of these areas until until there's overall satisfaction or until my time runs out. So today I'm, I'm working till five um, and I'll, I'll remain on this until I like it. And then if I, if I get that more or less accomplished, um, then, I, then I'll step down and uh, finish out the neck. Um, but yeah, it's a good mix. In fact, uh, Thiago, to your, to your question, um, the, there's even some areas that are, I'm still allowing to show this ground layer. Um, that's just kind of still coming through, which, which I'm okay with. Um, I like showing the various, uh, stages kind of all in one go if I can. This eye is messing with me a little bit. I think it's because I need to bring this in just slightly. So I'm getting a lot of lost edges on this side of the eye and I, I don't want to overdo it and really describe too much, um, but I do need to get enough of it down. So we're just going to see, see what happens. Yes, serious advice, uh, Thiago. Um, I this this may sound like a little bit of a cop out, but I would just say, as often as you can, be be painting. So paint, paint, paint. Don't find ways to really carve out time in your schedule uh, to to create and. Um, uh, for me, I had to, uh, I mean, er early on, like I was, uh, I was painting, um, like four days a week and then waiting tables at a restaurant for like one day, all day, um, just so I could get enough tips to pay my rent. And, and so the biggest thing that'll sound again, probably like a cop, cop out is just, man, you gotta, gotta get in the studio and be creating as much as possible. Um, depending on where you are regionally, you may be able to find, um, uh, an atelier, uh, nearby that, uh, that is training and drawing and painting from the live model. Um, and if, if you find a great school, uh, with great faculty, um, you can you can get there pretty quick. Uh, that's one thing that I, I missed. I missed. I didn't have uh, when I was coming up. I didn't have a lot of options on the, on that front because I'm, I'm from a smaller town, smaller city, and so um, I mean, how to start to paint? Uh, should I start with the grisaille and then uh, then the uh, entire color? Um, well. I think it just depends on how you like to use your oil paint. And I think for 
capturing skin tones, I really like to have a grisaille, or I like to have some layers of just dark and light underneath the color I'm gonna put on top because all oil color is transparent and that's one of the amazing things about it. And so when I when I kind of get in there and I start wrestling around with it, um, like this this highlight here is really just the white that I had laid on underneath and you know even this semi-opaque layer of paint that I put on top uh, still allows it to show through and have it be very bright and keen. Um, so I, I do, th I do think grisaille is a good way. It also allows you to focus solely on um, your values. So, Barack, good to see you, man. Um, uh, it allows you to focus solely on your on your values, and value is this uh, this space that you know you got to get right. If you get that right, so much of the rest of your painting goes well. Um, and so that's the nice thing about uh, like a grisaille or working kind of black and white first is you're, you're making all those value decisions before you're having to uh, deal with color on top of that. Um, but as, uh, as Brock will tell you, who just popped in, he's, he's an a la prima guy. He likes to do it all in, all in one go. And that is absolutely uh, a great way to use oil paint too. So you don't necessarily have to have uh, the grisaille underneath um, to make a great oil painting. If, um, if you pop onto my Instagram, which is just the same as my EBWIII, uh, you will, uh, you'll see a painting that I did of Bill Murray. And that Bill Murray painting uh, was made uh, solely from um, a an alla prima method, just painting one layer, boom done, um, and you know painting a little little thicker, and uh, really laying those strokes in and, and making it work. So it's a good question. Her face looks familiar. Um, she she's been in uh, numerous of my of my work. She's a, a model here locally that I that I. Uh, have uh, posed for me. So if she looks familiar, it's probably if, if you're familiar with any of my other work, um, you know she's uh, yeah she, she's in a lot of a lot of my work. No no no, Thiago, I, I appreciate the questions. So thanks thanks for uh, saying that. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. I love it. Yep. See there you go. Brock says all the prima all the way. So. I agree. It's it's hard. Uh, it's hard to do a layer, and even my you know quote unquote grisaille is usually very loose. It's um, uh, I I'm not gonna try to render every little bit, and um, as we as we continue to do this, which uh, Thiago, I'm gonna be here every. I mean, we're gonna do this whole thing until this painting is done and uh and we get there and so uh you're welcome to hop in uh, on, in future days and just see see how it's coming and you can toss more questions at me love to uh love to just be able to help you in your process so um please do brock if she if she looks familiar um it's funny uh <laughs> This this model every, every time I paint her, uh, she like pe people see the paintings and um, oh gosh I can't forget who they say they say she kind of looks like Emily Blunt they say she kind of looks like I'm trying to think of some of the names um, oh there's another show that I that I can't remember but um, uh, but yeah Emily Emily Blunt's one of the big ones where they're like. Did, did you try to paint Emily Blunt? I'm like, no, I didn't. But, you know, I'll, I'll tell my model that you think she looks like that, so. <laughs> so even though I'm 
kind of working through skin tones now, I'm, I'm treating them in the very the same way that I was doing the drapery earlier. So uh, I'm still using my, my buffer brush to kind of come and describe uh, the form. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm rounding out my strokes here and trying to create some of those um, following the contour lines so that we, everything we're doing kind of creates that, that volume. Andy, what's up? Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> so Monica Bellucci. Okay, a quiet place too, and I'll check it out. And thanks, Andy. Thank you. Um, it's good, good to see you guys. We're whew, day nine. Um, today has been a little bit of a comedy of errors. Uh, I, I tried to get started earlier today, and um, uh, I was uh, my wife was out, and so the kids were playing in the other room, and you know, I mean, that's always like a toss of the dice, and so I knew. Uh, I might be interrupted and sure enough I was so I had to kind of quit um, almost like 30 minutes in and, and come it's like alright I'm gonna come back um, and so yeah here I am for the afternoon uh, wife's home so she's she's minding the kids and so we'll, we'll see how, how the rest of the day goes Kind of softening some of my 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 brush strokes in a few areas, but I but I do need to get down to really the business of really capturing um, the eye effectively. Um, I think in and around the eyes, it's just always good to try to keep things about as soft as you can. Um, those hard lines, which, you know, if you look at mine, I've got a lot of them right now. Those hard lines are, uh, they don't really do you any favors. So I'm just gonna kind of add a few and a green and cooler colors on top of here, just a little bit, just kind of soften uh, what I'm working on. How's Sean doing? Uh, he he's doing good. I just I, I just kind of ran out of things for him to do, um, and so he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna go and uh, put put my energies towards something else." And so yeah, he he was here mm, about thirty minutes ago or so. And so um, I'm trying to keep him as employed as I can uh, in in things. So it's a uh, but sometimes I just kind of run out of um, the, either the book work or just some of the other things that uh, I, I don't have enough for him. So, so he feels like if he's just sitting there, um, I, 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 what, what I really need to do is just tell him, hey man, uh, stick around till about, seems like it's after three o'clock, 
suddenly um, everyone is, uh, you know, on the move and coming and hanging out. I think it's just later in the day, more people are on the stream. So um, I think need to need to just encourage him to stick around for a bit, even if he feels like I'm not doing anything. see a kind of warm mid-tones in this uh, veil. Is this the first paint painting showing through? Um, uh, it's the probably the only things that are kind of showing like maybe showing through from the other side would be like this big chunk of white and maybe the highlight on the nose. Uh, the rest is probably um, Yeah, so I think you're, maybe you're talking about this, uh, this white here. Maybe that's, yeah, that's that first layer. If, if I'm if I'm not uh, catching the right thing, just let me know. I'll try to answer that question better. I think what just always shocks me in this whole process is with regards to faces and capturing it's just it's just the smallest thing makes such a big difference you know it'll drop in um, and drop in just a little bit of a oh you know that works and you know, a little bit of a highlight here in the eye or uh, here at the base of the eyelid and the piece just changes we're here in the eye I really haven't established this really strong highlight yet it just always shocks me <laughs> It's like what 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 ends up working? Lay in a couple more. Highlights here. means the warm yellowish reflection in the scarf um, think. this is this is uh, so difficult <laughs> she gets to be in the room um, uh, so so there's a couple things going on here um, so this is the ground layer, this color here that I just dropped that daub of paint on. And that is just what I, kind of those a wash that I toned the canvas with before I even started. 
And then there was a little bit of, uh, I just kind of built up, I knew I needed a little bit of oomph because this area was going to be very light when I laid it in. So I added some whites here and this area was going to be a little darker than this kind of mid-tone ground. Um, and so I hope that's kind of, kind of the question that I'm getting to, so. Made it look, yeah, painted without actually painting it. Yeah, yeah. See, and, and it looks very different um, on the, uh, on the live stream. So I'm just kind of taking a peek here and seeing how it looks sort of finished, but it is completely unfinished. <laughs> not even, not even touched. Um, and so, and I, and I know that that'll ultimately be good when I lay some of those colors on. In fact, uh, just for fun, I'll, let me get totally get off track. And um, see if we can um, lay in some of these really try to lay this in. Um, maybe it'll make a little more sense. It's just a little warm. Um, let's see if I keep even close. Yeah, it's, I want it to be a little more yellowy though. So it's almost too skin tony there. Yeah, so there, there's the edge of the kind of veil here. It's really pretty intense. So I'm gonna just for fun kind of block it in. Since you asked, see, there you go. I take requests. Um, And it's a little intense there, but then I would probably, I would kind of carry that on down here to, a little too yellowy for my liking. Um, I mean, it is, it is a warm yellow, the cloth itself. So I kind of carry this on down here. It was good. I think I needed a break uh, from my uh, from the little brushes. So thanks, thanks for that recommendation. Or even just that asking for the clarity um, is good. And then I, for fun, let's see if I can just kind of lay in. It looks kind of green here. from this vantage point. And, and this is how, uh, this is a lot more representative of how I like to work. It's, it's tough for me to kind of get in there and some of those tighter, smaller details. I, I don't like it. Uh, then, uh, then there's some some deeper, warmer areas that are they're kind of underneath here, a little darker than that. My brush is is messy. There we go. So this is, uh, so this starts to kind of describe. Now I wouldn't be able to achieve the same intense uh, lights there without that. And similarly, uh, to get some of these darker tones, um, I just, if I hadn't have built up some of that dark already, it'd be really hard to, uh, to get a good, nice, uh, deep, deep dark in there. So I hope, hope that was 
I don't know, a, a nice little distraction uh, for the moment. See, that, that's not near as dark as it needs to be. So I'm kind of looking at my values. So I'll just drop my mixed black right on top and just kind of get that just a little more accurate. Something, something a bit like that. Yeah, and I, there needs to be some refinement there, but I just quickly searching out um, some of the things that needed to be described. Um, Like that, yeah. And I'm always happier whenever this uh, this ends up working better anyhow, because I can kind of see what's a little more finished around the face. It, it always helps me. So thanks for that. Uh, it is. It is, uh, Tiago, it is. Um, this is um, going to be uh, the Annunciation, uh, part of the, the Five Joyful Mysteries. And um, this is the first one. I'm going to paint all five. Uh, hopefully I'll finish uh, before December 14th um, is, is my goal. And... Uh, I I appreciate any prayers you want to say, because <laughs> I've I've got a lot a uh, lot ahead of me, and I want to do it well. Okay, for now, that's good. Um, you guys got me in another area. I'm hard, hard, hard to uh, set down. Okay, back, back to. Uh... So, 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 yeah. So that uh, I realized that was kind of a quick, quick run, but that just shows how much is covered. It's you know it's hard to make out, but I st I still see under this layer you know, this uh, ground layer, this um, ground toned canvas that I've put down. Like, I still see that through here. Um, and I still see the areas in which, you know, the, the, the paint doesn't quite cover. And I just, I just like that. I think that's what makes oil paint interesting is, is just some of the ways in which that ends up working. Um, it's uh, bizarre and just amazing. You're like, oh, okay, this is, this is oil. And Brock, you're definitely hired as my uh, as my new moderator. So thanks. <laughs> um, it's like you. It's like you. It's like you know us. It's like you hang out, and uh, <laughs> you probably you probably know already all the answers, all the things I'm gonna say. Um, so I want to really try to. Um, get the 
just a little more volume on the eye, and I think that that did it. That helped out a lot. Um, And it's crazy, this is just such a, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm never more frustrated than when I'm working on the face. And it's also at the same time, like never more rewarding when it works out. Um, it's such, every time it's such a battle. <laughs> um, percent these little brushes uh, drive me crazy I mean I know that I need to get uh, certain details in for it to work um, but I like to be painting and blocking in major layers which you know probably tells me I'm really I'm really an all a prima painter you know that's that's probably really so there, there there's there's a confession there Brock so um, 100% all prima. Cause I I too feel that uh, that that impatience. And just really wanting to capture uh, what I'm after. Good being employed, it is. <laughs> well, uh, I'll, I'll buy you a ticket and get you over here. Uh, as soon as I uh, sell my first painting for uh, six figures, then, uh, then we'll get you over here. See if I can get up my buffer and work work a little bit. <laughs> it's not the dark side. <laughs> I don't know when it's it's to me it's hard uh, not to love uh, love the quick um, and. I mean, you could do, it looks just so good. When you, when you think of like uh, Richard Smith um, and his legacy uh, and his paintings, which are just unbelievable. I, there were about, um, oh, six or so of his works at a local uh, art. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it's like teaching, they have classes and, and do all sorts of things. But um, I mean, they they had about five of his works on display and you know to to look at them and just to see what he was able to accomplish uh it was just shocking uh he's just so beautiful the brushwork um i mean the man was an absolute master of knowing you know how to get the right information in uh, it was just gorgeous. So I'm, I'm. There's, I don't think there's anything dark about it. I think it's, uh, I think it's good stuff. Um, 
I've, I've, I've seen with my eyes how, how good and great it is. And occasionally I feel like uh, I, I can really get it too, you know, but then other times it's, you know, not as much. Yeah, you guys, you guys missed yesterday. Um, I don't know. I don't know if Andy had already left or not. If he's still in, but we had a we had a thunderstorm roll in um, during the live stream, which was was kind of exciting. It made made for some. We sort of decided, oh, we got to figure out how to uh, always have a thunderstorm, um, or have it in the background, and and allow it to roll over us. It was awesome. So I decided to extend the cheek just slightly, although I'm kind of missing some shape here and there. I might need to, it's a little too kind of overly. We definitely need a break down here. And so I'm gonna press out the chin just slightly. But I did want to make a little more of, uh, of a cheek present. I think that creates just enough of that break there. I'll probably go a little higher. You know, you want both kind of youthfulness, um, yeah, you want kind of a, a regal air as well. So there's a there's a lot to balance. careful decisions I'm trying to make um, over here with the eye. I see a little bit. This is a little lower. This drops a little lower. The crazy thing is, is like, you know, you, you make a call and then it, it affects all the things. You're like, okay, well, I want to make sure this eye is working over here in this way, and then you do it, and then um, it will all of a sudden create like more distance between that and the nose, and then like it throws the whole thing off. It it is a battle of millimeters when um, when doing the portrait, or doing especially a face, or trying to capture someone you know. It's just there's it's hard. Um, a bit of a highlight there.
It's kind of hard. The eyes are really illuminated. Uh, she was looking directly at the light source, and so, um, you know, kind of debating um, how much I, I might be able to darken here and there in order for it to, it has to be a little more visible. So here's one of those moments where, you know, it's looking okay, but I'm just going to throw something crazy at it and see what happens, see if it sticks. And I, I think that worked out okay. Just darkening the iris a little bit. Yeah, mall stick. I do. It's um, laying over here, uh, but instead I'm I'm kind of a pinky guy, so I sort of rest my pinky. I've seen this, uh, so I've wanted to upgrade. You know, I'm I've turned 42 in uh, less than a week, and so I've been thinking about how I might um, kind of upgrade my chair and my whole system. You know, they, they make these uh, uh, chairs for like surgery and dentistry that have kind of um, a base with which I can I could rest my elbow. And um, they're also what they call saddle chairs, which will kind of help me stay more upright. So, you know, those, that's the sort of thing I'm thinking about <laughs> as, I, as, as I'm aging out here. Um, and so I, I think I'm going to maybe uh, do that uh, for my birthday this year and uh, and basically say it's time to start thinking about your future old man um, so so a, a mall, the mall stick would be nice I've just never quite gotten the hang of it um, but I think too if I just had something to brace my elbow and which was adjustable in height uh, that that could do the trick too but right now it's just the pinky um, but I do own a mall stick and I and I have I have used it on occasion, um, and it is useful. So I am I'm not dogging it. It's it's a good way. It's a good way to achieve, and obviously, like ev everyone does. Um, Carbon fiber handle, nice. Light as a feather, that's awesome. That's that's a great idea. That that is good advice. Would everyone feel better if I used my mall stick? It's pretty light. Uh, let's see if I can get to it. That's the trick. Here it is. Here we go. I mean, it's pretty light. It's it's aluminum, and I I could be resting it um, here on my uh, on my sketchbox easel, um, but yeah, I I just like the movement and the shoulder and neck pain that follows. You know.
So if you haven't figured out, I just jump around. It's like, what what is bothering me at the moment? And until I see that next thing that's bothering me, I just kind of keep working where I'm working. And as soon as it's like, oh, that's, uh, that needs to be addressed or mm, that's, that's a harder edge. I don't like that. Or yeah, I just, I'm just jumping around. For now, that's good enough. I'm gonna put down this mall stick. I don't even know how to use it. Just kidding. I, don't. <laughs> I do. It's just it, it's it's like it, it itself. Its movement is. Uh, I have to think too much. Hey, thanks, Tiago. Come back. We'll see you later, man. Yep. Planning on doing it tomorrow. There's a hard edge and value difference between her, the right cheek. I don't know what that word is, um, but I think maybe you're, th you're mentioning this, uh, this here, here. I know, I know my zygomatic here, and maybe that hard edge is what you're talking about. Um, I, I'm satisfied all the way through here-ish. I'm okay with the structure of the face. I, a lot of times I'll do this too, or you know, I'll just kind of cover up um, part of it, see which, I haven't really done the lips yet, that's why. There's a thing that I'm not quite complete with. I, I think I know what you mean, I think it's this line here. Two, I, I do want to soften all of this uh, considerably. And so uh, that's that's a good word I need to I need to deal with that. And, and there's much more to be, uh, uh, to be done in this area too. But again, I appreciate the feedback because I, I can't always see. Um, and many times I can't, can't see it for what it is. All right, let's, uh, let's block in just a little more darks there. Cause I, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to address what you're saying. If I'm not, then, Sorry, but this is what I saw that, that made sense to me. That got a little cooler than I wanted it to, so. I mean, there's a pretty dark shadow here as well that I just haven't really taken the time to describe. Don't be shocked. I know those, those sort of things are just so jarring. Like you drop that in, you're like, oh, what have you done? Um, Hello. Dad. Yeah. How's it going? I love cows. Uh, you can talk to mom about it. Yep. Yeah, that was a. That was a hello from Ernest. What? Bye. That was a hello from Ernest Vincent Wood the Fourth. Um. I w I was kind of keeping. One of his uh, cars, you know, you gotta, 
you gotta have discipline in some way. So he's keeping one of his cars while uh, so he, he he wants it back. So it's one of those moments where it's like, am I going to do it? Am I is it is it time? Has uh, has he felt the sting of regret <laughs> uh, for doing the wrong thing? I'm just kidding. Um, but you know, parent stuff. I'm a painter, uh, not a not a parent. <laughs> I'll just say, I'm much better painting than I am parenting. Yeah, let's put it that way. Still needs to be softened quite a bit there. <laughs> yeah. Need to be assessing my time to 3.51. Uh, I've got about an hour left. So it'd be nice to basically be done with, uh, with this. So about an hour remaining. Um, Yep, that's better. And that, that did a lot for me. And you know, I'm just kind of starting into the dark and moving toward the light. So I can get just a little bit of that. Um, Gradation. You just needed to soften that some. I feel better about that. Again, kind of get on my buffer and just clean up some of my edges if, if some of that got hard and where you're okay uh yep i haven't dealt with uh really the mouth or the area nose below in here so that needs all that needs a lot of attention um So we shall begin. Was very subtle uh, adjustments, you know, 
you get them wrong, and then somebody has a mustache. Uh, so, you know, I'm barely adjusting the value here. Um, but it does need attention. It needs to be addressed. And I think that's what's so uh, just funny about this whole process is like, you know, that adjustment there was very satisfying and, you know, produ produced uh, so some good results. Um, but like, <laughs> uh, I mean, I could do that over and over and over and over again. Um, and that's where, you know, where the frustration comes in. Is, you know, as with anything, what point is enough? Um, Liking it, liking it so far. It's uh, I don't know how noticeable that is, um, but right part of the face slightly more to the left of the upper lip meets the right cheek. It's right cheek. So you're thinking in this area, um, if, if we're talking about like her, her right, um, I probably just need to look up my, get my uh, uh, anatomy book out. So, cause you, you use the right term are you, are you studying to be a doctor? If I if I'm asked too many personal questions, then Carry this up. Nope, I didn't like that. It's always this push and pull. I'm like, okay, I think I want to do this. And then I do it and I'm like, nope, I didn't want to do that.
My problem is I think I just made that cheek a little too rounded in an attempt to soften um, the age a little bit. And I think I just need to, br need to bring it back down some just a little bit. Give it a little little shape. Just didn't have before. Right. Check the comments. Yes, you're right. Uh -huh. Dr. Brock, all right. <laughs> Yeah, and here's here's where it gets a, a little difficult because I I mean so I'm uh, I'm limited to what I can make out in this source photo. So I see kind of a little bit of a warmth here. Um, It's kind of, kind of, it's like hunting, I guess. Hunting for that, just that right bit of information. Too, if I get a little bit of the light right here on this side. Tone down these little, they're a little too, too bluish. A little too different. Um, sometimes. Uh, the, the like the lost edge here on the lip can kind of, kind of do quite a bit um, and just kind of really in helping achieve that uh, level of realism. We're getting there, we're getting there. Thanks for just mentioning that side there, Brock, because that just caused me to look a little more deeply at it and I, and I wouldn't have otherwise, so. But 
tell a little bit about the the eye underneath here. Thinking, looking, thinking, looking. I think it, I, I usually just get a little overwhelmed. <laughs> um, there's usually so much that needs attention. Um, that, that, that I'll lose. I'll just lose important parts that I need to to get. Mm. Let's see. Here's my uh, this is one of my, my favorite tools right here, the the, the mirror um, to just kind of I'll just hold it back, try to see it fresh, see things in reflection, and it allows me to say, ah, oh, yes, um, this needs a little help, or this, this needs this, or, I like it as a, kind of a, a just a, a critic that uh, is not going to let me pass by, it's, it's, it's going to really like say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call you out. I think this, this is where uh, the frustration comes in. There's so much that needs to be adjusted uh, and only, only so little time. Shadow here. This part of the chin needs to come, or jawline just needs to come down more. Seems kind of shallow. We do have a little bit of reflected light underneath. Dies away pretty fast, but Get a little bit in this corner. Way too much, but I'll I'll turn it down. I'll knock it down some with uh, my brush here. Details of that structure just a little more Yeah, I think it's all on that right side. 
uh, her right side. Something's just still still bugging me. So there is a little bit of the the shawl that shows here and I'm debating with whether to kind of drop that in or not. I think instead I'm gonna I'm gonna avoid the issue and drop in another little line here, see if See if it helps. That's probably a little too much, but you know, at, at 20 feet in the air, that clarity will be nice to have. Yeah, this is usually the time of day, um, especially nearing finish. I mean, this is this is nearing finish, or it's it's probably going to get to the level that that I can really achieve. I mean, I, I just kind of get quiet as I'm just problem solving and assessing and feeling some of that pressure of like, all right, this is the day's almost up. So, um, did, did I get there today? And that's the, I'm going to be hardest on me for sure. So. A lot of looking, a lot of searching out. The longer you do it, the more you see needing change. So I think it's just in art in general, um, I think it's valuable to just remember that there's always going to be more you could do and 
to not be too hard on yourself and yep that's easy to me it's easy for me to say about about you but it's hard for me to do for me <laughs> um, and hard for each of us to do for ourselves If you just joined the stream, welcome. You've, uh, I've, I've just uh, you know wrestled for the last few hours um, with uh, painting the figure. Always, uh, you know, especially faces, is uh, you know is a difficult thing to do. And um, now we're just getting down to the refinement and these kind of refining moments. before uh, for the end of the day's work. So at this point, I, I jump around a lot. I'm looking, I'm searching, um, trying to find the parts that uh, really bugging me or try to just work out this edge a little bit. where I just made maybe a little too pink. Um, try to toning, toning it down some. But also thinking about you know, the knowledge of where the painting is ultimately going also changes some of the decisions I make. So you know, view it at a little more of a distance. And so if some of these edges are a little sharper, if some of the color is a little more exaggerated, um, it's only gonna help the painting and help it to be viewed um, in the right way.
kind of you've kind of come at my my quiet moment and so <laughs> thanks thanks bro yeah it's it's amazing how it just kind of slowly 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 happens it's a I'm I'm as much as probably anyone else just kind of shocked um kind of had my head down to a degree um focusing on the things that I can see and then and occasionally I stop back up sit back up and look and I was like oh yeah that's that's working better now um Change that highlight so that it was a little more forward. It's amazing. All those little placements matter so much. Okay, I think, I think I'm gonna pause there. Maybe make you know one little edge adjustment here. Too much. And I'm going to jump into the neck with the last, ooh, you know, 30 minutes or so. See where, see where we get. I am, uh, I am a lot better with it. I'm uh, much more uh, content now than I was about an hour ago, about an hour, uh, an hour ago. Got that going anyway. See if I can get a pay a little tension down uh, in the, to the, the neck area before I have to I have to call it for the day. Quite a bit underneath, and not quite, quite getting the coverage that I want. I have to go in a little darker and a little thicker.
and I'm using a brush that's a flat with some really hard edges, which is not doing me any favors. Just a little bit of, that, of a hint of an ear down here. I can't really quite make it out, so I don't know. We'll, we'll put a shape in there and hopefully it'll be enough. Aaron. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Love having you here. And uh, so sounds good. Sounds good. We're working. Um, uh, this is a. Uh, I'm doing the five joyful mysteries. So this is. It's gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be hanging out a lot. Doing. You know, working. Uh, um, exclusively on uh, on sacred art for. For the foreseeable future so thanks and thanks for stopping in saying hi i entered uh take heart daughter into um there's a there's a catholic art um kind of competition and so we'll see if uh we'll see if anything comes of uh, some of my entries which you know Hey, can hope for the best. And tomorrow we'll probably move into the hands, so just to give you a little bit of a heads up. Um, looks a lot like working on the face. <laughs> a lot of little details, um, a lot of careful, careful drawing. Uh, it is uh, laborious in the same way. Um, but again, really rewarding when it works, and you really feel uh, you know the fingers and the palm everything in three dimensions 
goes a long way. So we'll be we'll continue be t continually working through skin tones and and battling uh, battling all the things that um, happens when you when you do hard stuff in oil. All of the the rough feelings and and thoughts of wanting to quit and be done with it and why does this never work and so that's that's tomorrow so tune in again tomorrow if you get a chance and Hands, hands are, hands are the worst. <laughs> I think, I think that's uh, uh, my YouTube video about painting hands. I think that's what I say the very first line. Let's be honest, hands are the worst. <laughs> um, so I agree. Hands, faces. So much. Just so much can go wrong, <laughs> let's be honest. I'm gonna exaggerate that just a little bit. Some of my Hard to see the way this is tucked in. Usually about this time of day, mentally, I, I start to get, I, I guess just like all of us, you know, you get to the end of your day and uh, there's been a lot that's gone on. A little worn out. That's what's happening right now, a little worn out. here I want to capture I like to try it didn't seem to work out too well this time, but I like to try to make the, the neck a little cooler than the face on purpose. I'll just kind of lean it a little cooler because um, that coolness can set back in. Uh, the face, if it's warmer, comes out. It's just a natural, warm, cool thing that happens spatially. Um, so. Didn't quite get it there. Everything's kind of looking about the same. Now, what I can do at a later date, as soon as this is all dry, is I could put just a little bit of a glaze just over the top of this, and make it maybe make it a little darker, a little cooler, or a little greener, 
and that'll really uh, make that uh, the face set forward more. Yeah, I think it's I think it's doing all right. I'm, I think I'm pretty much there at the stopping point for the day. I don't know that I want to do too much more. Let's soften this edge a little bit. Let's cast shadow. Yeah. I might uh, just do some of my contour line um, strokes with uh, with the brush here. Try to describe. See, this is kind of a little half moon motion, trying to really follow the form. You know, and that some of that under layer is still showing through uh, in in all these spaces, which I think really makes a big difference. I, knew I had some of that shadow color on my brush, and I thought I would just try to carry that there. Ooh, that was a good decision. It needs to be a little darker. Right. Let's take a step back. Take a look at it. Yeah, I think I think we've gotten there for the day. We have a little bit more time, but I'll uh, I'll clean up and and wrap up. Uh, just, a, just a tad early. I don't quite have enough time to dive into uh, the hands or any other skin tones, but tomorrow we'll be right back at it. Um, and please, uh, please join. You can see uh, the hands kind of come into being and we'll be um, getting to the other face. Uh, there's just a lot, mm -hmm. there's a lot more to do. So uh, thanks very much for being on board. Barack, good to see you. Uh, and whoever else is on. Uh, blessings, uh, take care, and uh, happy painting.